I'm going to sit down and I bet, I bet that I will get swarmed by dogs. Boom. Boom, dog. Called it. Oh. Camera hog. Oh, camera hog too. What is up today guys? Welcome back to another full sale monthly experience. Um, this is month seven for me. Uh, it could be month nine for you because I had two prerequisites done. I say it in every video, but I'm gonna keep saying it. It could be month seven, month eight, month nine, maybe month six or five or whatever. Month seven for me in uh, Full Sail University's computer animation degree program from Full Sail University. Uh, and this class was Fundamentals of Art 2. The Art 1 class was called Fundamentals of Art 1, but I kept calling it Foundations of Art 1. So maybe it's Foundations, and this one's Fundamentals, but I don't know why they call it Art 1 and Art 2. So I'm feeling like a few months ago I was calling that one by the wrong name. Whoopsie. Um, but this is for Fundamentals of Art 2 from uh, Full Sail University. So month 7 for me. Let's talk about this. Shoot. What are we gonna talk about? Let me look at my notes. Alrighty, so first of all, we're just gonna start off with basic class information. We're gonna jump into some assignments after that. I'll tell you a little bit about the teacher. Then I'll give you some tips and then we'll end with some in shorts. Boom. Okay, so for starters, some basic information. The class, fundamental, blah, dang, that was the worst I've ever said it. The class, Fundamentals of Art 2, is uh, a class in which you have one lecture per week, and that lecture for me was on Tuesdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So by that time, you know, by the time you watch the lecture live, uh, you've lost like two of your seven days to work on your homework. So the good thing about this class is you're able to watch pre-recorded lectures. I don't know how long ago they were recorded, but um, they were pre-recorded, and you can download them Monday at 12 a.m. So you can get the most out of your seven days. Rock on. Uh, so that's kind of what I did. I didn't do Monday at 12 a.m. Heck no. I didn't want to sleep. Yeah, I, for the most part, I watched it Tuesday mornings, and here I am. I survived. I think if you take Monday to yourself, you're not going to fail because we all need a day, right? Much like Art 1, we started using Concept Share again, so don't forget about your login information because you have to Concept Share. Well, you don't have to. It's more of a, if you want additional feedback before you turn it in, which I think is always a really good idea because you, you know, you turn it in and they're like, I wish you would have tweaked that. And then I could have given you 100 rather than uh, putting it on Concept Share. Some dude says, hey, isn't that, you know, isn't that just a little bit too wide? And then you're like, oh, heck yeah, let me select it in Photoshop and uh, shrink it down. I think Concept Share is a great tool. Um, I don't exactly like the format of it. I wish it were all within FSO, which if you haven't figured out by now, is just Full Sail Online. It's our little portal that we use to upload assignments and get information and download assignments and all the school stuff. But yeah, I think it's great. So it's uh, something that I recommend using. But once again, it's optional. This is a drawing class and in, I almost called it foundations again, in fundamentals of art one, I do believe that they recommend you do everything traditionally. In this class, you can choose traditional or digital. Traditional is paper. Boom. Um, so I did all of mine digitally just because I'm going into computer animation. So digital drawing is kind of the way of my career path. If you still feel comfortable doing um, traditional, go for it. They don't have a problem. Just scan it in and make sure your scanning is all right. And then uh, put your stuff in Photoshop. No problem. They'll accept it. And uh, they don't give you extra points if you do it traditionally. They don't give you extra points if you do it digitally. They don't care. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. 
Boom. And I don't think I said it, but maybe I did, but just in case I didn't, there are 24 assignments this month. That's kind of a lot, but at the same time, not really. So let's let's break it down, and um, I'm gonna tell you about how the class kind of works, and then we're gonna get into the assignments. So the way that the class works, every week you have a discussion due on Wednesdays, uh, then you'll have a quiz due Saturdays, and the rest of your homework will be due on Sunday, okay? We're all set there. The weeks went like this in terms of homework. You had like uh, an explore, which is like, you have your basic idea of uh, what you're gonna be doing in the week. So Explore just kind of gives you a little taste. It's you uh, right in, it, it gets you in the right mindset. That's what I'm trying to say. And then you have a practice group and each of these groups give you like one or two, maybe three assignments to do. So it's like an A, a B, a C, all the way down to G sometimes. And then you have a practice group. You kind of get to play around with the concepts that you're learning. And then I think there was a create group in which you actually make something. And then a competency group. Make sure you understand it. You're competent. I really hope I used that word right. That's kind of the breakdown of the class and how each week worked. So now we're gonna move into the assignments portion of this little video. Week one, what are the assignments like? The assignment topic for week one is perspective. Everyone loves perspective, right? Mm, I don't like perspective. Maybe you do. If so, awesome, you're gonna do great this week. So um, let's look at some assignments and see what kind of assignments you can expect. I'm probably not gonna highlight all of them, but I'll highlight some of them. By highlight, I mean talk about. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna talk about all the assignments, but I'll pick and choose some important ones and uh, I'll leave the other ones as a surprise for when you get in the class. Let's look at some assignments. I'm not in the tips section of this yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it anyway while I'm thinking of it. Create a folder. It says month seven, fundamentals of art two, or whatever you wanna call it. And then in that folder, I would recommend making a folder called JPEG, folder, <laughs> folder called Photoshop, that's really hard to say actually, and then a folder called Whip, work in progress, easy. And when you get to a stopping point on your Photoshop document, save it out as a JPEG uh, in your Whip folder, and then upload that to Concept Share. You get some feedback and uh, you're participating in the class. That's a good tip for you. And it's an easy way to you know stay organized and all that good stuff. Just my recommendation, Take it for whatever it's worth. If it's worth nothing, then don't take it because it's worth nothing then. But now let's get into the assignments. All right, so like I said, week one, it's all about perspective. So I'm gonna pick just a few of these. You have one, two, three, seven assignments uh, in week one. Uh, in week one, I spent I spent about 19 hours in week one doing homework. That's it's about average, I'd say. Um, so yeah, now let's look at them. Scratch that, I miscounted, you only had six assignments. Okay, 1B, it's a fun one. I really liked it, but it does take a while. You're in Photoshop and you have to create three separate pictures. Uh, the first picture, create an abstract-ish one point perspective drawing, easy. Next picture, two point. And as you probably guessed it, next picture, three point. Um, so this one does take a while. Uh, I would recommend spending quite a bit of time on it since it's kinda, I don't know, you gotta get used to perspective. That's what they're trying to say for this week. Assignment 1C, it's cool, but at the same time, it's really not. Um, I can't talk it up. There's nothing like wrong with it. It's, it just bored me, you know? You had to create a road and then put like telephone poles or something like that going down and disappearing into the vanishing point. And then you had to decorate the scene. So, I mean, it sounds cool, but to me, it just, there, there's nothing that, you know, pump me up. I was like, I can't wait to do 1C. No, I wasn't like that, you know? So it is what it is, moving on. I realized that um, I left food and cold stuff sitting on the counter for my Walmart trip. But on the bright side, aren't these bananas just cute? They're baby bananas, I mean, you know? I'd say 1E is probably the most fun assignment this week. Overall, the week was very boring though. Um, but 1E was the most fun. In one point, in one point perspective, you draw a person and then it doesn't have to be good. It's just a silhouette. Don't you freak out. Use your guidelines, and then you draw four other people in perspective with that person, and uh, you get to just have fun with it. And they get smaller and smaller as you go in the background. Total five people, and uh, I got to draw Batman, so awesome. Moving on. 1F, I hate the way that my 1F looks like, or looks. It's just not interesting at all. I believe the idea here was create a scene, shade it, all that good stuff, and you have to convey perspective and atmosphere, space, you know, all that good stuff. That's why I've got this hallway going down, 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 and you got all these loops, you know, it shows, hey, it's getting smaller, there's space here. 
but I forgot texture and um, the recommendation I got if you know the thing that could have made this picture better is if I put in something that we can reference size to even if I were to put like a coke bottle in there it would show hey this thing is roughly this big because we know coke bottle is like yay big or put a person I guess that makes more sense than a coke bottle put something of reference in your scene so that the viewer can be like hey I recognize that object so I know the bigger object is like that big so my thoughts on week one perspective um, I didn't like it I mean I liked the drawing of it I don't like perspective it's too technical for me I like to just be free and do whatever I want so if you're like me you're gonna struggle with week one I promise you week four is worth it week four is the best ever in the history of everything so you just gotta stay tuned even week three it was pretty great week one and two you just gotta get through get through them and you'll make it speaking of week two that was a perfect transition let's get into week two alrighty so week two you had a b c d e f g you had seven assignments what in the world seven like a whole assignment a day uh, but yeah you had seven assignments don't freak out it's just human anatomy that's all that's all this week is um yeah week two is human anatomy that's some scary stuff it's definitely intimidating but you can do it you can do it don't don't freak out you got this well to be okay let's just get into this or to not to be <sighs> dang it, i hate myself to be very easy it shouldn't take you but maybe 20 minutes or so you're doing gestures it's just scribbles of the shape okay that's it no mas you are gesturing um, 10 people. Male, you can do female, you can do a mix. It doesn't matter, just 10 gestures. It shouldn't take but 20 minutes because a gesture I'm actually take you two minutes. How do you go about doing this? Well, you can do it in a few different ways. You can go outside and look at people as they walk. Go to a gym and get some cool dynamic photos. Ask a family member to make some cool poses. Yo, brother Chad, can you do this for two minutes? And if he does, he does. If not, well, then you're out of luck. But you're not completely out of luck. Ooh, what the heck? Okay, well, I was gonna recommend a Figma model because that's what I used, but the arm literally just snapped off, so maybe I shouldn't recommend one of these. Yeah, I got a female one too. You can use a Figma model, just kind of pose them and then put them on the little stand and draw that for two minutes and then repose them and go again. I still can't believe that it just broke. Well, like, what the heck? He was just laying there and I picked him up and snapped. So I'm gonna have to change that review of mine that I did a few months ago from a nine to like a seven. I'll give it a seven now. Take that, Figma model, you've been disarmed. Okay, let's keep going because this is getting to be a long video like these most mostly are. I would recommend a Figma model, but it broke it. So do what you want to do. Moving on, 2D. You're drawing five hands and five feet. I'm not flexible enough to get my foot on the screen. Yep, drawing five hands, five feet. Very easy. I took photo references and I was like, click. And then I was like, hmm, let's put that on my screen. And then I'll draw it over here while looking at that. 2F. This one was a pain in the butt. You have to find a photo reference online and recreate it. They want a gesture, a construction shape, which just means build your pose out of spheres and cylinders and squares and cubes and stuff like that yeah it's really not that hard to do a construction shape but they want just your construction shape and photo recreation this is what i did uh i got a 95 on it because i didn't put in the toes i forgot the toes like what the heck they're looking for something like this just do better than i did so week two of human anatomy took me 18 hours to complete uh it's an hour less actually than uh the first week even though it was a ton harder but the first week I was just coming off a five week break from school because I moved and <laughs> I was just in a, I was still on vacation. Um, so now let's get into week three. Week three is one of two that I was really looking forward to. This is animal anatomy. Alrighty, week three. So once again, you have seven assignments, A through G. Let's get into this. Now your goal for week three is to find two animals that you really want to combine and make a hybrid of them. You guys may have seen last week where I did the seahorse and the fruit bat. Um, that's because that was for last week's assignment. All right, so assignment 3B, uh, that's where you discover what two animals you want to combine, and then you gather, I think, like 10 references per creature. Maybe it was five and it was 10 total. But just get a lot. Um, try to think about every aspect of that creature. If it's a bat, get the ears, get the eyes, get the nose, get the mouth, get the wings, get the body, get the toes, get the tail. 
Um, yeah, get it off. If bats even have tails, I don't know. I did a fruit bat, you should think of them now, but I don't. I'm gonna think that they do. I'm gonna go with it. Maybe just a little tail, what the heck, I don't know. Maybe not, forget it. Don't spend too much time thinking of the perfect animal combination. Because in the industry, you're gonna have to make concepts for things that just aren't the perfect ones to you. So what I did, I did this. I asked Bailey, I was like, what two animals should I create? And she picked a seahorse and a fruit bat, things I never would have picked. When I first think, wow, I'm gonna create an animal hybrid, the first thing I think of is not a seahorse, definitely not. Maybe a company that I'm working for wants me to create a seahorse fruit bat hybrid, and uh, then I have to do it. It doesn't matter if I'm personally motivated to do it, it's my job to do it. So I accepted the challenge and I like the result. So yeah, you're just gathering references. That's it. 3C, now you're going to do a full body study of that animal uh, and then two other studies. It can be a skeletal study, a detail study, construction shape. I forget what other ones there were. You had like five options or so. Um, but I went ahead and did the full body seahorse. Then I did the seahorse skull as a skeletal study. And then I did the seahorse tail as a detail study. Then for the bat, I did the full body, the detail ear study, and the wing skeletal study. So you're gonna have six pictures for this one assignment. This assignment takes a long time. As a matter of fact, I will tell you exactly how long it took. This assignment here took me 557 minutes because I have my little punch list in terms of minutes. Okay, so yeah, this one assignment took me over nine hours to do. I really like the result of it. I think it's cool. It got me a 100 on this assignment. It was worth it, but dang, I had to get up at 4 a.m. to draw a bat wing skeletal structure what the heck that's my life that's a that's a full sale life you know art never stops Art don't quit so yeah that's what 3c is uh, you're doing three concepts this is where you're kind of getting into what your creature will look like and then you're going to pick one of your concepts and uh, you're gonna draw it and make it look very nice just like you did in human anatomy like the one I did where the guy's going like that, you know? And I have some tips for you on this guy. I love it. I think he looks cool. It's a seahorse fruit bat, you know? I'm probably gonna frame it and hang it up somewhere. But here's the thing. I was going for like a cool lighting thing, but I got docked 5% because it looks like the arms and the torso don't really go together. It looks like they're kind of Frankenstein together, meaning take the arm off this guy, take the body of this guy, and just stick it together. I kind of see that now, now that he tells me. I was just trying to do a cool lighting thing. Here's another thing. You'll notice my seahorse fruit bat doesn't have the little flappy wings. I thought it looked cooler and a little bit creepier if he didn't and he just had the giant fingers like the bat does. I got docked 5% because it's not functional. Your creature has to be functional. I was told that wouldn't be very helpful in water or on land in the air. You know, you gotta have your creature be functional too. It's a great assignment. This was my favorite one of this week, and I got a 90% on that. 5% per problem that I already told you about. Don't feel the need to be super completely accurate, because it's a made up character. It's a made up creature. This creature thing does not exist. There are no seahorse fruit bats flying around anywhere. You can be creative and have fun, as long as it's functional. But yeah, week three, Animal Anatomy took me 21 and a half hours to do. The larger of the three so far, and I think it's my best one of the three so far, you know? Alrighty guys, week four. This is the fun one. This is the one I was waiting for the entire time, okay? Character design. Can't express how much I was waiting for this one and how much it really met my expectations. It's awesome. I already had this character, I created this character back in like eighth grade. Uh, now I feel like he is more developed, you know what I mean? Probably, I, I probably shouldn't be so worried about this one, but I am. So I'm not gonna show any of my own pictures, but I'll show you pictures from the the website. Like, I know I shouldn't feel scared that someone's gonna steal it, but I, I've developed this character so well, and I'm trying to find the right way to unleash it, you know what I mean? Like, publish it. So I, oh, I don't wanna have what happened to Disney happen to me. Didn't Disney create Foghorn Leghorn and then like Warner Brothers stole him and then that's what inspired him to create Mickey Mouse? I feel like that's it, but I feel like I'm also really completely wrong. Um, if I'm right, let me know. And if I'm wrong, tell me what I'm thinking of because I, I don't know. So that's why I'm not going to show my own character. Scratch that, guys. I really don't know if I'm allowed to 
put the um, put the pictures from FSO on because that's other people's work. Okay, so you're just gonna have to follow me on all of these examples, okay? Um, there won't be any pictures because I'm scared to put my own up. I love you guys, but I feel like someone's gonna watch this video and it's gonna be someone that hates me and they're gonna steal my character. So I'm sorry, not today. Maybe in a few years once I figure all this stuff out. So in 4A, what are you doing? You're creating the character profile. You're saying the basic information, you're telling height, weight, eye color, all this good stuff. You're gonna tell their fashion, friends, their enemies, things they like, things they dislike, literally everything about them. If you can think of a detail about yourself, like, wow, I like pizza. Well, what food does your character like? Uh, you're gonna tell them about your fashion. I like wearing superhero shirts. What kind of stuff does your character like to wear? Um, and then you're gonna write your backstory and it has to have a telling moment, you know? The teacher gave the example of Batman. What's Batman's telling moment? Watching his parents get killed. What's Spider-Man's telling moment? It's not getting bit by a spider. It is instead not stopping the burglar or the thief, whatever, that ended up killing Uncle Ben. It has to be an emotional moment that makes this character who they are. 4B, uh, what'd you do? You simply took the information from your character page, your profile that you made, and you are gonna create three concepts, kind of like what you do with the animal, but this one you're listening to your own words. Okay, this character has big teeth, this character has blue eyes, this character wears a golden cape. Have all those in your concepts, but try to make it different every time. Come up with three different ideas. 4E, what are you doing? You're doing a turnaround. You're doing a front view of your character, and then you're doing a side view, and then a back view. Great thing is, once you have the front view done, you can copy it, and then in that copy, erase all of the middle detail where you just have an outline, and then there's your back. Um, so you're gonna have a turnaround of your character so that you know what they look like from all sides. And use guidelines so that everything lines up. It, it'll just be easier. So in week four, it took me a total, this one is the largest one, of 28 and a half hours to do. That gives my entire work time for the month, it puts it at 87 hours. 87 hours and seven minutes if I wanna be super exact, but I'm gonna leave it at 87 hours. Okay, so we finally made it through all the assignments. There was a lot. Okay, now I'm just gonna say a few things about the teacher. I think the teacher's awesome. He seems like a very fun kind of guy. The only thing is the grading time, and I'm sure he has hundreds of students, so I really don't even care about this. Sometimes I didn't know what I got for the past week until like Saturday or Sunday of the following week. So week three, when I'm working on animal anatomy, I didn't figure out what I got during human anatomy until Saturday of week three. Like, it doesn't bug me. I know he's got hundreds of students, lots of things. It's just something you gotta know. Don't expect your grades to be in on Monday. And that's kind of it. Other than that, teacher seems awesome. He gives some great feedback. Um, seems like a cool guy. Uh, definitely easy to follow in the lectures. Okay, um, I already gave out some tips while I was going through the assignments, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give the rest of them that I have. There's not too many, like three. Create a punch list. If you remember from Project in Portfolio 1, a punch list, you know, you say, this is the assignment name, this is the task, here's my estimated time, here's the actual time. Time yourself, that way you know how fast you can go. And in following weeks, you can, you can try to estimate better. Week one, I estimated it take me 600 minutes. It took me 1,100 minutes. Yeah, okay. Week two, I estimated 1,100 minutes, and it took me um, 1,084 minutes. So I'm, it helped me. You know, I picked up how fast I am. Uh, and then the other two pieces of advice really are just for Photoshop stuff. When you're drawing, if you're drawing hair, that is, go from the darkest to the lightest. You know, it's easier to pull the light out of the dark. Dang it, that was such a like inspirational quote. Holy cow, that's, um, I'm gonna have to watch that back to even remember how I said it, but I, dang, I got chills down my spine. Go from darkest hair to lightest hair, it just makes it look nicer in my opinion, but you can do whatever you want. I just recommend it. Um, and also turn down opacity. Uh, I just think it looks better. Those are my two pieces of advice for Photoshop. Other than that, that's kind of it that I've got on tips. I already gave them all out throughout the uh, assignment portion. So if you skipped right to tips, ha, you gotta watch the assignments. Okay, now we're just gonna get into an in short and we're gonna wrap this up because I've been going for a really long time. Okay, in short, what can you expect? You can expect lectures probably from seven to eight every week, uh, once a week. You can expect to work probably around 80 to 90 hours during this month. Um, you should expect week four to be your heaviest time in terms of working. You should not expect to know your final grade before Friday or Saturday for the past week because teacher has a lot of students 
understand that. There's going to be a whole lot of drawing in this class. I recommend getting like a, a wrist support thingy, something like that. Because during week two, my, uh, my wrist just started killing me. It may have been from all the drawing, but I'm also a meat cutter, so maybe it came from that. But that's just probably more along the lines of me information than for you. You can expect 24 assignments throughout the month. You can expect a whole lot of work, actually. You can expect perspective in week one, human anatomy week two, animal anatomy week three, character design week four. You can expect a discussion every Wednesday. You can expect a quiz every Sunday. Nope, not Sunday, Saturday. Quiz every Saturday. And you can expect all of your homework to be due Sunday at midnight, just like any other class for the most part. Um, and I think that's it, guys. I think I covered everything. It's been one heck of a month, but now, now's the exciting part. Now I'm in animation. So in a month from now, I will give you my thoughts on this animation class. Holy cannoli, that's exciting. Okay, um, so we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can like me on Facebook at Tetrit Art Art of Jacob Beasel, not Tetrit Art the Art of Jacob Beasel. Twitter, I'm uh, T A T A O J F, I think. Tetrit Art the Art of Jacob Beasel. Yeah, T A T A O J F. Um, Instagram, Tetrit Art, all lowercase, all one word. And uh, of course, YouTube. If you guys would please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. See you guys later.